discuss uh, the security fallout from the Middle East, other key issues, uh, as you've been hearing here. The Democratic Congressman, Jason Crow, he is also a member of the Intelligence and Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, uh, thank you for being here on the Hill. We appreciate the time. We've been trying to get you on for a while. Uh, so, so thanks for coming on in. Um, well, it's good to be back. It's good to be uh, it's, back. Uh, go, it's good, good to have you back. Um, so Christopher Ray testified. Um, you hear the comments, you think what? Is, is this the most dangerous point that our country has been in in quite some time as you see it? Well, certainly the number of threats, both the, the breadth of the depth uh, of the threats and the, and the depth of them uh, is more than any time in my lifetime. There's no doubt about that. We have cyber terrorism. We have narco terrorism. We have Vladimir Putin uh, invading uh, Ukraine. And by the way, Vladimir Putin will not stop uh, in Ukraine. If anyone thinks that this is just about Ukraine, they are fooling themselves. He has outright stated that his goal is to reconstitute uh, the map of the former Soviet Union. Uh, we have 100,000 troops in Europe. Uh, we have, uh, you know, collapse of governments in Africa. Uh, you know, we have a climate crisis that's destabilizing vast swaths uh, of the world. So, yes, the, the threats are, are innumerable, and we do not have the luxury anymore of just focusing on one or two of them. We have to be good enough and strong enough to do more than that. We see the IDF congressman going into the hospital uh, in Gaza and coming out with uh, or saying that there's automatic weapons, grenades, ammunition, uh, that this was essentially a compound uh, for Hamas inside this hospital. What is the way forward there as you see it? Well, there is no doubt that Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization, should not be allowed to exist and needs to be dismantled because their, their M.O., what they do is use human shields. They put their compounds under schools, under hospitals. Uh, that, that is what they have always done. That is what they will always continue to do. So the, the path forward, in my view, is a sustained surgical counterterror operation by Israel to dismantle Hamas, but that also puts front and center the protection of civilians. If we've learned anything over the 20-year war on terror that we fought and spent three and a half trillion dollars to fight, to try to destroy ISIS, to try to destroy Al Qaeda, which, by the way, are growing and expanding throughout the world, is that there's no military solution alone to terror. You must pursue political resolution. You must pursue diplomacy, and you have to put humanitarian needs front and center. Because if you go after a terrorist leader and you kill that terrorist leader, but you, uh, in the process. Uh, um, you know, there are civilian casualties that are incurred in the process. You're actually creating more terrorists in many cases than you are killing. Is some form of a ceasefire acceptable in your view? Well, I think we have to be honest about the language that we use. I have called for a humanitarian pause uh, because a humanitarian pause is but, something but that is that, that can do. Is, is that semantics, though? I mean, I, I know you have, you know, concerns for civilians on the ground, but a humanitarian pause is, is, a, is a ceasefire, no? Mm -hmm. No, it's not semantics, and here's why. What a ceasefire implies, and that's why I haven't used this language, is, is that both parties are both capable and willing of effectuating a ceasefire. Hamas will never do that. They have neither the capability or the willingness. You know, terrorist organizations, by their definition, live outside the rules, don't abide by agreements, nor do they have the capability, because Hamas is not a monolith. It's a dozen different groups. So even if you got one of those groups, one of those commanders to abide by it, doesn't mean that the others would. So what we're actually calling for uh, is, is Israel to take a slightly different tack here, a humanitarian pause, <laughs> to make sure that we are going about the counterterrorism op operation in the right way. Congressman, before we go, uh, there's obviously the big meeting uh, in California right now with President Biden and President Xi. And as we talked about at the top of the show, there are all these business leaders who want a moment, or a little bit more than that, uh, with the Chinese president. Elon Musk, head of Citigroup, head of Exxon, Exxon Mobil, uh, head of Microsoft. Do you take any issue with these uh, private American citizens meeting with the Chinese president? Listen, private citizens and business leaders will do what uh, they need to do. We are a free and independent country. Businesses are always going to do what's in their best interest, that is to grow their business and get business. But guess what? That's why business leaders are not elected officials accountable to the American people. That's why they're not responsible for our foreign policy. That's why we have elected officials who are accountable to the American people that run our foreign policy. So businesses are, are being uh, very predictable, actually, by doing this, by trying to engage. That's why President Biden is doing the right thing by engaging with our adversary having discussion about areas of mutual concern, but also showing strength. I may speak softly, but carry a big stick, stick type of person. China, Russia, and others, they know whether we're strong or not. 
That's why the House Republicans have to put up a, a defense bill that, that, that I support, by the way, uh, that, to make right. sure that we are strong and we have that big stick. Hey, I, I got to run, but I want to ask you, because Elon Musk is involved, do you think he has too much power or too much involvement with foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Starlink? I am very concerned about uh, several uh, businesses' involvement in our foreign policy, particularly in the space realm. Uh, you know, Colorado is kind of the epicenter of space. Uh, when private companies have control over space infrastructure to the degree to which they can, you know, impact things like Ukraine, uh, operations of our allies and partners, it's very concerning to me, and it's certainly one of the things that I've been looking at as a member of the Intel Committee. Thank you for watching, and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.